My name is Susan Nylands. I'm from the west coast of America in a little town called Washington, Camas. Camas is a beautiful place with a lot of water. I keep skep hives in my backyard and they've become a passion for me. Keeping bees in a very old way but with a very new heart for new ways of beekeeping. My motivation with my bees is, is to share. I've learned from the bees that bees share everything. That's their nature, is to share and be generous. So the bees encourage me to be generous so I can teach people about their ways. And I realize that the more generous I become, the more peace I have inside and the better I feel about myself, that I can be so generous in this scary, difficult world. And the bees say, don't be afraid, just give it all away, which is what they do. And so I'm more and more trying to give it all away. I teach about bees and their care. I teach about weaving skeps and getting groups together to weave together and make these homes for them be a personal meditation because the bees have this meditative hum and presence. And everything I do with them, I want to carry that same presence. So I meditate on each stitch that I weave. When I do classes, we hum together. I will start people out and they'll laugh. They'll go, oh, this is so silly. It's like, it's not silly. You hum for a couple minutes and then they open their eyes and their faces have changed. They're relaxed. The tension has gone away. I'll bring someone into my yard and I'll say, you don't have to say anything. Just sit here and smell the aroma coming out of this hive. And they will smell. And they will settle. And that's what I want to give people. I want to give them the peace that bees have given me and the wonder that bees have given me. My my only reason for being with bees is to share and to become more like them uh, so that every step I take in the world, like the steps of the bees, is always goodness. They take nothing. They give to the flower. They give to the light. With their wings, they spread prisms of light over the earth that other creatures can feel. It's always giving. And I want to make it so that every step I take is not, no more, no more a taking, that it's always a giving. How can I help you? How can I be of benefit? And in the same way, how can I protect myself? Because the bees have a sting. They take care of themselves too. They're completely beneficial. And yet they say, don't go that far. This is where I need to, to take care of myself so that I can take care of the rest of the world. And that is what beekeeping has become for me. It started out with bees in a little wooden box, and now it's bees in these beautiful woven homes. I weave the grass, now I'm growing my own grass, now I'm teaching others. So like the hive is this world that expands, expands, expands for the bees' whole forage area. I started with insects in a box, and now my world is expanded. Now I'm teaching. Now we have a bee club. Now we have an organization where we grow flowers in town, where we put hives up in the library, where people, when you say bees, they say, oh yes, the bees, I see them, I see them at the library, I see the flowers. And that's my way of being a bee myself. How generous can I be in this world? Hello, I'm Julie Armstrong. I'm from Canberra, Australia, from a group called ACT for Bees, which was started in 2014. We're not, I'm not a beekeeper. I'm a voice for the bees. And lately, really getting to know that I'm an ambassador for the bees, really speaking about how important they are and how we can all take care of them. 
One of the things that our group has done is develop curriculum for children to be incorporated into the Australian National Curriculum. Two years ago, we worked with a, a group of curriculum writers called Australia, and they worked with us to create Love Food, Love Bees for Year 5-6, which is all about being curious about bees and, and what their relationship is to do with us and to do with our food, and then about the importance of pollination. But it's also about really deepening our connection with the natural world. And for me, this is really important, that our children and ourselves really get to know nature and to develop a deep connection and gratitude for all that the natural world brings us. And so some of the, 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 the curriculum is also about going outside and, and looking out for bees and other pollinators, looking to see what flowers they are on, but also just being still, finding that space within ourselves, within nature, and feeling that deep connection that we are part of the natural world and that we are important. What we do is important in our care for the natural world. Lately, this year, we also worked on developing a curriculum for high school students for year 9-10. And this was really in line with the United Nations Sustainability Goals and it fitted well in with the year 9-10 geography curriculum. So we developed the curriculum Love Food, Love Bees, Food Secu Security and Sustainable Agriculture Systems. And it was really, we wanted to do something that would bring hope and positivity to students because they're faced with such de darkness about what, what's happening with the unravelling of ecosystems. It was really about looking at what sustainable agriculture is and how it can change the way uh, farms are and how it can support biodiversity, it can support the health of water and the soil and also our health as well. And then what the other systems of monoculture and high pesticide use and how that is also driving climate change. So through looking at many, many farms in Australia that have actually made the change to sustainable regenerative um, agriculture in many different ways from orchards and local food systems, local food hubs, to forestry, to you know, grain. Uh, it gives students a, an idea that, um, of where their food comes from, but also that we also have a choice about where we source our food. Every day we have three choices about the way our food is produced, the, the, what we eat. We have many people in our group and much of it is uh, working with uh, the community teaching them about planting bee-friendly gardens in our schools, in our, um, in our backyard gardens, but also in, our, in the developers. So we've been working with the, the government and also developers to plant pollinator corridors throughout, um, throughout the city. Uh, we also have um, a group of young people at the, at the Australian National University who are working to develop more bee-friendly gardens and to reduce pesticide use there. So there are many people who are becoming a voice for the bees. We can all be bee guardians. My name is Ariella Daly with Honey Bee Wild. I'm based in Northern California. And I focus most of my work on a combination of teaching women how to keep bees in a treatment-free and more natural setting as well as shamanic work connected to honeybees through the European tradition, the path of pollen. I came to this through my own healing with bees. They helped me through a difficult time and I have found that the vitality and eros and relationship of the body of the woman connected to the body of the bee through the symbol of the womb 
is an incredible healing modality for both women and bees. I'm Cheyenne Bone. I live in Nevada City, California, and I'm a honeybee consultant. I work with folks who would like to start honeybees on a small scale in their backyards to help support the species. And I work with folks with top bar hives and waray hives and also log hives in natural habitat. My inspiration came a number of years ago with connections with the honeybee from a spirit-led place and seeing how they are so much the center of the mandala, a indicator species for how our planet is doing and how life flourishes and witnessing what happens to the landscape with the bees present, how the plants come alive and uh, the whole deeper life force of a place can really vibrate with their presence. And a big piece of my inspiration is also recognizing how we as humans have lost our connection with the natural world in a lot of ways. And working with the, de the bees at a personal level is such an opportunity to reconnect to the landscape that we live in, um, working with the bees and learning how to, to drop into that quiet place that's necessary when we're checking a hive is um, really potent in reconnection with the natural world, becoming aware of the blossoms that are happening at what time of year and seasonally to, again, begin to feel that interconnectedness. So working with folks in this way to bring their presence back with their landscape and with what's happening with the bees who are such a key species for us in this world and how they can show us um, such a, um, a sweet way of living and being. The bee as an individual is part of a collective community, what we would call a super organism, but even beyond that, the connection of the bees in the wild with the trees and the plants, there's an interwovenness between them and the rest of life. And when we as humans can work closely with that connection, uh, it brings us that much closer to nature as well. And so the inspiration is from those places of helping us to reconnect and the mirror image that the bees can give us of a way of living is just profound and really deep as teachers and they bring so much joy. So that's a lot of what has motivated me to step into the realm of beekeeping and to help connect people with these incredible small winged ones and the gifts that they offer us. My name's Kate Denning. I'm originally South African but living in the south of England. I have a few uh, hives now. I have um, a couple of top bar hives, a couple of skeps in a, in a tree house and a log hive um, and the bees seem to be doing really well. I don't treat and I don't take honey, um, practical reasons as much as the fact that I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, I'm also planting for bees now in my own garden um, and they seem to be thriving. I have losses but um, generally they seem to be increasing and thriving and swarming. Um, I think the most joyful experience one can have is being close to a swarm and collecting, gathering a swarm and, and, and homing it. Um, and I care very deeply about bees and feel a real connection with them and it's an absolute joy to, to um, have them in my life. My name is Alberta, Alberta Popmar. I'm from the Netherlands. I live um, very close to Nijmegen in a very small village and I have a very big garden where I keep bees. Well, not ex I don't keep bees, I'm not a beekeeper. I never wanted to keep bees. But somehow they entered my heart and my life and after that they entered my garden. I was gifted a swarm by a friend of mine and um, I have been fascinated by bees for as long as I can remember and um, I live with them. They live in, they're keeping me, they're keeping me, I think that's the best way to explain it. Um, I'm a, I don't consider myself a beekeeper, I never call myself a beekeeper, I'm a bee guardian and I offer them a place to live. I'm also the sun hive weaver because the first time I saw um, Sun Hive, which was designed by Gunther Manke, a German um, beekeeper, biodynamic beekeeper. 
I just fell in love with it and I had to make one. I, I don't think you have to buy a sauna, I feel you have to make one. You'll have to put your heart and soul into it and make it with your own hands. So I made uh, my first one in, uh, in England and I've been weaving them ever since. So most of my bees live in Sondheims and um, they bring me joy every day. So I just go and sit there, listen to them, observe them. I never open them, I never open the hives. Um, and they just, they bring me so much joy, they've really enriched my life. So I think that's more or less all I can say about it, really. My name's Walker Rollins. I'm from Los Angeles and I am a beekeeper who does removals and education. And I am also a teacher of regenerative gardening at a Waldorf school. Um, where do I start? So I became interested in bees by becoming an armchair beekeeper, which means I did a lot of reading about bees and was anticipating having a hive at some point. And um, that hive actually came to me through a swarm that landed in a tree outside of my kitchen. And that's where my beekeeping career started about 20 years ago. Since then, I've been interested in the idea of uh, keeping feral bees. In Los Angeles, we have about 11 hives per square mile, which is an abundance of bees. Um, and they're doing quite well. So I've been looking at why are they doing quite well? Why are other bees not doing well? So my interests are in understanding the resilience of feral bees and what can we learn from them. And that had taken me on a course into um, gardening, actually. And um, I became a uh, teacher at the Waldorf School. And now I run a vegetable garden at our high school and I'm also teaching the children about beekeeping and bee wellness. My name is Heather Swan and I'm from Wisconsin in the United States of America. I grew up in an area where there were many many fields full of wildflowers and I became very conscious of the lives of all of the insects that were living around me because I spent a lot of time in those fields with my dog. Um, later on, I discovered that an occupation was being able to spend time with bees um, as a beekeeper. And so that became a dream of mine. When I became a beekeeper in my young adult years, I learned that the bees were um, struggling and wanted to make my life about sharing the beauty and the magic of bees. And so I spent a lot of time writing about my experience with them and also about the strategies that are here for us to make the world a better place for them. Uh, my name is René Schouwenberg, I'm Dutch, and I live in Amsterdam. Uh, I make virtual poetry with my colleague, Egit van der Linde. I am here because I feel very, very much attached to the bees. And why? Because they learn me something about humanity, that means about myself. I learn to be uh, more human in a certain way. That means I have to, to get contact with the bees, I have to open up, so I have to use my senses. I can hear, I can smell, I can feel, which is very important because since Descartes, we know everyone, uh, everyone knows, since Descartes, we are head and body. That means I and you, and object, subject, we can use everything, we can use objects. 
so we can slaughter 50 million animals or something like that. We use, abuse each other, nature, everything. What do I learn from the bees? By opening up my senses, I learn that we human beings are nature, like them, that we are one. We are part of it, and so I think I can learn a lot from them to make me a better human being. That's what it is. My name is Ingrid van der Linden. I live in the south of Holland. I'm a visual artist and I'm making films as well. But they are more short uh, virtual poems. And I'm touched by the bees because they have such a huge responsibility for the earth. They are working together for ages and ages, so they are an example for me. And the filming of these bees bring me to another world. It's like a meditation. If you are sitting there and watch them, it feels, yeah, of they guide you. Also, when you are doing the editing, the bees take it over. Sometimes it, it's just, you just, your fingers go and of they are guide you. So, this is the first bee film and I hope to make more of these uh, little films and I've made a poem which is at the end of the film and I would like to uh, read it for you and it goes like this. Bees, guardians of light and experts of darkness, working in a field of responsibilities since the time of the Genesis in Africa connected with the roots of the flowers, transforming the deep earth into ambrosia. Their commitment is strong and eternal. What is our commitment to the earth? My name is Margaret van der Meeden and I live in uh, New York, uh, in the suburbs, an hour north of the city. And I am um, I've had bees for 22 years. They uh, came into my yard as two swarms one day, and I um, did not know anything about bees at that time and have learned ever since. Uh, many times uh, I thought about quitting, but every year I would start over. It's a dedication that is probably the biggest dedication I have to anything in my life besides my children and it gives joy the and learning is endless um, i still learn from the bees my biggest attraction was the the amount of presence one gets when you are with the bees you are with the bees and nothing else and there is not much in life that we have where we can be so present hi i'm melissa vanek and i am from western massachusetts and I live on a beautiful plot of land there that I call Dragonfly Hill. And I am here with these beautiful people because the bees have inspired me in many ways. I work with bees because they remind me of the language of, of the land, of the earth, that's the same language within our hearts. And by working with bees, it connects me closer to that language, uh, a language that we've all had before and we've kind of lost a little bit of that connection. So the bees, for me, have been an easier way to get back to that connection of the earth. And they remind me that I need to stop and listen and breathe. And I am a part of the landscape all around me, just like they are, as they travel from their hive out to their flowers, miles and miles, they know the land, they know each flower, they know the scents, they know the colors, they know everything about their whole entire land around them. And they bring that back into the hive and they transmute that into something even more beautiful. So it is an, also an invitation when you work with bees to take all of the beauty from around you and to take that in and to transmute that on your own. And I came to bees through a dream, actually. They spoke to me first through a dream. And that language of the dream is a little bit closer to the language of the earth. It's a little more from the heart. And when you can learn to 
be quiet and calm yourself and listen to the bees, it gives you that sense of being able to tap into that very dreamlike quality of the earth and the language that the earth is constantly in a conversation with us with. It's just something that you have to listen for and the bees remind us of that. My name is Lavender Grace Cinnamon. I'm from Mendocino, California in the US and I come here to the learning from the bees because I had to, because the bees asked of me to listen, to hear what they had to say. I provide sanctuary for the bees as best I can. I try to help others understand their teachings through music and through art. Through the frequency of sound and connection, finding tools to help us find the same things, to find that connection within each other. And I was called to create the Honey Hive of Mendocino to gather those tools for others and share that as a facilitator to connect the dots for us to learn all we can, how to be better for each other, how to be better for the earth, for our ecology and our place in the earth as just a part, as a connecting part, a link to how we can be in abundance and flourish here. To recognize and honor how important our creative energy and force is and I feel the bees have told me this. They have said to me when I asked and I asked that inquiry of why am I here? What is it that I really, really want to do? And they told me that what you want is to be part of something much greater than you could ever be on your own. And that everyone has their equal place there. No one higher, no one lesser. And that it is for the greater good of all. Bonjour, je m'appelle Caroline Aissaguer, je suis française et j'habite à Los Angeles. Euh, je suis venue à cette conférence euh, grâce à une amie euh, qui, qui a des ruches. Et euh, à Los Angeles, je travaille avec une artiste, Lauren Bond, dans son studio, Metabolic Studio. And she is um, the voice of the pollinators. She has been supporting a living being and bees for many years on the forefront in America to, um, to protect them and um, make sure that their habitat is safe and their life is safe. Her work is um, also involved with bees. She used um, for part of her work, she used some wax and some, she has a whole library collection of honey um, that comes from all over the world that she collected from um, uh, countries that have been uh, scarred and wounded by war or a crisis. And uh, veterans from all over these countries have been sending her honeys, and she has been making this huge library of honey. And um, myself, I feel I have been also called by the bees in a way, and that's why I'm here today. Bonjour, je m'appelle Catherine Fleurin. Je viens des Pyrénées en France et je vis avec les abeilles depuis l'âge de 20 ans, depuis plus de 40 ans. Je vis vraiment au milieu des abeilles et elles m'informent en permanence, elles m'accompagnent. Donc je suis venue aujourd'hui à Learning from Bees pour partager 
ce que les abeilles euh, me transmettent et comment je vis avec elles. Euh, je suis bien sûr entourée euh, d'abeilles et donc de ruches. Et je travaille toujours euh, avec les abeilles euh, sans voile, sans tenue et surtout sans fumée. Euh, on n'a pas besoin de ça en apiculture, c'est pas nécessaire de s'habiller avec des habits de protection ni de prendre de la fumée euh, pour visiter les ruches, euh, c'est l'inverse. Euh, les abeilles, si elles vous piquent, c'est parce qu'elles euh, vous considèrent euh, comme dangereuses pour leur environnement. Euh, si vous approchez les abeilles et que vous êtes favorable dans la matrice des abeilles, vous serez facilement euh, admis par les abeilles et je veux vraiment l'expliquer aux personnes qui commencent l'apiculture qu'il n'y a pas un mur entre l'homme et la nature, entre l'humain et la nature, qu'on est ensemble dans la même matrice et que tout ce que l'on pense, tout ce que l'on ressent, toute notre charge électrostatique que l'on a en nous, c'est ressenti bien sûr par les abeilles, par les arbres, par les fleurs, par tous les animaux autour de nous. Et on est nous-mêmes un animal, donc euh, je viens transmettre ça. Et c'est vraiment euh, important aujourd'hui euh, que l'être humain il se reconnecte réellement, réellement dans son corps, avec la nature. Donc j'enseigne euh, le yoga des abeilles, qui n'est pas du yoga avec des mouvements, mais simplement une approche spécifique où euh, l'être humain va pouvoir vraiment vivre avec les abeilles et comprendre et parler le langage des abeilles, non pas avec des mots, mais avec ce qu'il émane, avec ce qu'il ressent, avec ce qu'il est, avec euh, l'ensemble de sa personne. Et on apprend aussi à jouer vraiment son rôle sur Terre, à être soi. De, ça, c'est vraiment ma mission. Et aussi de montrer que les abeilles sont là euh, avec les humains. Elles ne sont pas dans un monde sauvage à part. Si les abeilles sont avec nous, ce ne sont pas des animaux domestiques. Elles, elles restent totalement euh, libres et sauvages. Mais si elles restent dans leur ruche auprès de vous, apiculteurs, humains, euh, c'est qu'elles ont choisi euh, d'être là pour vous dire quelque chose, pour vous transmettre quelque chose d'important à vous, personnellement. Et ça ne sera pas des mots, ça sera des chants, ça sera une pénétration dans votre esprit. Donc euh, c'est vraiment quelque chose que je vis au quotidien et que je peux expliquer facilement en langage courant, en français, en anglais, en espagnol. Et je veux bien l'enseigner à ceux qui ont envie de découvrir ces euh, secrets. Je suis Véle Suyers, je suis de Belgique, la nord-est de la Belgique, à côté de Antwerp. J'ai commencé à beekeeping il y a 10 ans, la vie traditionnelle, et j'ai vu que ce n'était pas ce que je voulais. Donc j'ai commencé à regarder autour. I discovered tree beekeeping and then I organized a workshop two years ago and uh, I also organized a workshop in Sunhive Skep um, to weave a skep was this year at my house and the motivation why I wanted to keep on doing natural beekeeping is that I have big admiration for the being and that it gives me um, a lot of energy which I don't find elsewhere and um, I feel that I need to go on on this path and it, it's the bees who will guide me further on. I'm Tanya um, Rapati, I'm from Belgium. I, um, Yes, I got in contact with the bees because my husband um, uh, got a hive. Um, but immediately the whole garden changed. The, it was as, a, as if the frequency of the, um, the garden was higher. And it was as if a heart was spread out over the garden. And it opened also my heart. And then from then on, it's three years ago, um, we got some more hives, some bees died but I am assisting my husband. So I'm very passionate about it. I think 
it makes a bridge for many, many things. A bridge for the spiritual world, a bridge for men also to talk about what they feel, what, um, how they connect uh, with the wider world behind um, many things, not only the bees. They bring it, they bring it without words, it makes it easier and um, it's like an experience you have immediately. So we share this together or we share it with many people, I'm sure, all over the world. My name is Rowana and I'm from the Netherlands. And I got in touch with the bees because I'm interested in uh, permaculture and sustainable farming. And I think bees play a very important role in this. And I'm lucky to have found a really good teacher who not only showed me the, um, the techniques of natural beekeeping, but also how to love a bee. That's important to know as well. And the most important thing she told me was, um, if you're not sure what to do as a new beekeeper, you can just turn inwards and ask the bee and just be, just observe. And that's the thing I want to teach people as well, that it's okay to be gentle and that's okay to be receptive and that this is a, a legitimate way um, of getting information. And what I want to do is show people um, how to get back to nature and how to get nature back into the people and to show them that it's already in there. And the bees are helping me with this and they are helping all of us with this. My name is Elena Kafori. I am from Novato, California, north of uh, the Bay Area. And I am relatively new to the beekeeping community. Uh, I, am, I feel so humbled and privileged to be here with this wonderful community of supports, this learning community, this creative community. And hope to support and contribute what I can to the conversation around honeybees and our pollinators. I fell into this community recently and, and a bit by happenstance. And to me that demonstrates the nature and the magic of, of the bee and the ability for it to touch all of us and touch our lives, not just through the tending and the support systems of the bee, but through the community, through the communion with the organism, learning, feeling, sensing, and all of those aspects of, of being a natural beekeeper. I have four children and we tend to our land and to all pollinators within our ecosystem and we feel that the honeybee has a special place in our hearts amongst all of those organisms. It's both a guide to us and how we work together within our own family, within our own hive of six and it's also it's also something we learn from in terms of how to deal with the various stresses within our own hive. We find the, the bee to be a mirror for our own humanity, our own family system, and our own interactions amongst each other and, and with our greater ecosystem. And in that, I find the learnings in the, from the bee to, to be a truly graceful and imaginative and magical space. My name is Jacqueline Freeman. I live in the Pacific Northwest in the United States. And bees came into my heart and soul, unbidden, year, many years ago. And I've been working with them for uh, uh, probably 15 years now, although I'd hardly call it work. <laughs> it's pure pleasure. Um, everything they've taught me has made me a better human being, and I bless them for that. I'm Jenny Johnson. I'm from Maine, USA. From the bees, I get a sense of having to uh, be more than I know myself to be. They call me to be something deeper, something more reflective, something more sensitive to the world, to humanity, what I get from the bees isn't so much even about the bees 
as it is about the gifts that the bees help me to find for myself, to make myself a better version of who I am now. And that's what I get from the bees. My name is Sunali Shanti Sikand, and I live in Northern California, Sebastopol. And I have appreciated coming into understanding myself and the rest of nature through the bees. Um, just one of the many facets of understanding my life using it as a glyph, as a type of symbology. But I don't look at the bee as the be all end all. I see it as a gateway insect because of the relationship and the appreciation we can have so that we can spread that further and start to embrace and understand the entire ecosystem and the entire natural environment. Um, the dung beetles and the ticks and the veromites and all of it in the beautiful dance of life. And with that, I do appreciate this work and what's being done to highlight and empower and shine on the women's voices. And within it, I would also like to share that it's very important to me that it's not just the women as it was just the men for so long or the masculine. Now we do it different, we do it with the women and the men, and we have all our voices carrying forth together. It's not one or the other.